Mary Stauffer, a 21-year-old ninth-grade algebra teacher in Roseville, Minnesota, in 1965. Ming Sen Xiu, a 16-year-old student, joined her class one day. Mary, like all of her students, was kind and compassionate to Ming. Unfortunately, he mistook Mary's kindness for something entirely different and developed a sick, twisted obsession with her. Ming developed feelings for his math teacher over time. Unbeknownst to Mary, he kept a journal detailing his violent sexual fantasies, and after graduating from high school, he spent years looking for Mary with one goal in mind, to turn his grim work of fiction into a terrifying reality. Mary married her husband, Irv, and they had two children, five-year-old Steve and eight-year-old Beth, over the next fifteen years. Mary had no idea Ming was trying to track her down all that time. Ming broke into a house in 1975, thinking it was Mary's, but it was actually her in-laws. Before fleeing, Ming bound the befuddled elderly couple and threatened to kill them if they reported the incident to the police. They did as Ming said, terrified, and because they didn't know he was looking for their daughter-in-law, they didn't warn Mary either. Five years later, the Stauffers were preparing to relocate to the Philippines to work as Christian missionaries. Ming finally found Mary a few days before their flight. He discovered her address, workplace, and even the names of her children. Ming sat nearby in his car with binoculars and spied on Mary, later telling her he watched Beth play with her favorite Barbie in her bedroom. Mary had never suspected anything sinister was going on until a strange man kidnapped her and her daughter at gunpoint. Before they left for the Philippines on May 16, 1980, Mary took Beth to a beauty salon to have her hair cut. Ming approached Mary as they were leaving the salon, holding a gun to Beth's side and saying, I need a ride. Ming dragged them into their own car and told Mary to take the wheel while he sat in the passenger seat. She had no idea who he was or what he wanted, but she was confident that if she did what he asked, he would let them go. Unfortunately, Mary was mistaken, and she soon discovered that the man was no stranger. Do you recall what grade you gave me years ago? Ming inquired. He told Mary that giving him a B and destroying his perfect record had ruined his life. He explained that this was his retaliation. Ming ordered Mary to pull over after an hour of driving. Mary and her terrified daughter were duct taped together and forced into the trunk. Mary tried to beg their kidnapper, but her cries were ignored. Jason Wilkman, a curious six-year-old boy, was playing at a nearby park when he noticed Mary and Beth in the trunk. Ming kidnapped Jason, leaving no witnesses. The Wilkmans were soon frantically searching for their son. Ming murdered him the next day and dumped his body in a wildlife refuge. Ming took Mary and Beth to his house, chained them up, and locked them inside a tiny closet with only a small rug and two throw pillows. He completely removed the doorknob, leaving no way out. Meanwhile, back at the Stauffer house, Irv was worried because Mary and Beth hadn't returned, and Steve was crying for his mother. Irv finally called the police at midnight and reported them missing. The FBI quickly determined that all three abductions were connected, and an intensive manhunt for Jason, Mary, and Beth was launched. There was nothing but silence for 30 days. But on Father's Day, June 15, 1980, at 10.14 p.m., Ming allowed Beth to call her father, Irv. If Mary tried to flee, Ming threatened to kill Beth and the rest of the Stauffer family. He told her she was his and that she would fall in love with him one day. Every day, Mary hoped Ming would change his mind and let them go, but when he bought an RV and told Mary he planned to take them far away, she knew he was never going to let them go. Ming left on July 7, 1980. Mary and Beth went to work chained together in the closet. Mary realized she had no choice but to take matters into her own hands, it was now or never. They might not be able to escape once Ming has taken them away. Mary managed to remove the hinge pin from the closet door with only her fingernails and, for the first time, see their path to freedom. Beth was terrified, and she reminded her mother of Ming's threat to kill them if he returned home and discovered them fleeing. Mary knew their kidnapper would be home any minute, but she had to try. 
She told Beth that this was their only chance, and that they had to fight. Mary and Beth, still chained together, ran into the kitchen, found a phone, and dialed 911. Within minutes, local police and FBI agents arrived. Mary and Beth were discovered huddled together behind a car. They were finally rescued and reunited with their family after 53 days of ordeal. Ming was arrested on his way home from work the same day. He was charged with second-degree murder in the death of Jason Wilkman, as well as kidnapping and rape in the case of Mary and Beth Stauffer. Ming finally led the police to Jason's remains six months later, bringing closure to his bereaved parents, David and Sandra. The Wilkmans found it in their hearts to forgive their only son's murderer in court and later relocated out of state in search of a fresh start. During the 1981 trial, Ming drew a knife from his pocket, grabbed Mary from behind, and slashed her across the face and neck. The wound was closed with 62 stitches and left a scar. The judge ordered a psychological evaluation. Ming had sexual sadism and an antipersonality disorder, but he was found competent to stand trial. Prosecutors described how a seemingly normal adolescent morphed into a loner who developed a crush on his teacher. Ming, who was born in Taiwan, moved to Minnesota with his parents and two younger siblings when he was eight years old. His father, a University of Minnesota professor, died three years later. Ming developed sexual feelings for his mother, Mei, when he was 14, and he set three homes on fire. He received a juvenile probation sentence and was ordered to attend psychotherapy. May told the therapist that Ming was a pathological liar who had no feelings. Ming participated on the football, track, baseball, and wrestling teams while attending Mary Stauffer. He had perfect attendance and high grades. Ming always smiled at school, but at home, he was violent and erratic. He physically abused his siblings, and his own mother was terrified of him. May hugged Mary and apologized to the Stauffers and Wilkmans for her son's actions during the trial. As a mother, I would feel terrible if my son did what Ming did. I expressed my feelings for her. My suffering lasted seven weeks, but it will last forever for the Xiu family. Mary Stauffers. Ming was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to life in prison. The 72-year-old is now imprisoned, suffering from arthritis and kidney failure. As planned, the Stauffers relocated to the Philippines. Beth and her younger brother, Steve, grew up, married, and had their own children. Despite everything that had happened to her, Mary found the strength to fight back against her kidnapper and ensure that he would never be able to harm anyone again. Mary, now 79 and a great-grandmother, demonstrated that women can do anything and will go to any length to protect those they love. What are your thoughts on the Mings and Shiyu's case? I really appreciate your input. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Be a part of the Chris Crime Diaries family and hit the subscribe button now.